developer. Oh crap, I didn't think about how to do this for movies. For video games, I usually do the developer, or the publisher, but movies have like a bajillion people I could address. This is my first time doing movies and I don't want to mess it up. The convention that I come up with now will be the convention I have to stick with. Why didn't I plan ahead? <laughs> Dear Timur Bekmamakov, that's it, directors, we're good at two directors. Hi, it's me, Austin, and I decided that I want to talk about movies now on my gaming channel. What's that algorithm? You don't own me. And what's a better way to start than to overanalyze a forgettable movie from over a decade ago that, hey, guess what? The Mythbusters already talked about. That's right. Today, we're talking about the 2008 movie Wanted and going over how, if at all, you could curve a bullet around an obstacle. So let's get down to it. How on earth can you curve a bullet mid-flight? You see, I've watched the Mythbusters episode on this a bunch of times, and while they do a great job proving that you could probably never curve a bullet, they don't like prove prove that it's impossible. They demonstrate that it's probably not possible, but they don't prove it. In fact, nowhere I looked online really went over the sheer mathematics of this maneuver in the movie. So like, that's what I'm gonna do because I want to, because graphs and drawing are fun. The idea is really simple. John McAvoy's character who sucks, by the way, can I just like talk about this for a second? This is the suckiest movie protagonist I've seen in a while, just the worst worst. He's like if you took all the worst parts of Neo, Scott Pilgrim, uh, Jack from Fight Club, and like Anakin Skywalker, but with none of the good parts. At least this movie did give us Morgan Freeman saying, shoot this mother 10 out of 10. Totally made up for the rest of the movie. Where was I? Oh! Right, curving bullets. All right, so John McAvoy has superhuman reflexes and speed and all that jazz. Not supernatural, superhuman. Part of his suite of superhuman qualities is the ability to like whip his arm like a major league baseball player while firing a gun in order to make the bullets follow a curved trajectory and move around corners. The idea from the movie is that if you were able to put enough sideways energy into a bullet as it's moving through the chamber of a pistol, when it leaves, it won't follow a straight trajectory, but instead it'll curve. And this, this is complete and total nonsense. I know I should probably dangle the carrot a bit more, but I have a lot to get through and it's just, it's, it's stupid. No, no, it's impossible. And we're going to ignore for a second how, for whatever reason, annoying protagonist McGee here also seems to be swinging his arm in the opposite direction of the curve, which makes zero sense because we have to get to the part where no matter how fast you swing your arm, you will will never, ever, and I mean capital E-V-E-R, ever be able to curve a bullet. The Mythbusters demonstrated that at both Major League Baseball player speeds and twice Major League Baseball player speeds, you see no drift from a fired bullet. But why is this? What makes this impossible? I'm talking a hell of a lot of trash for someone who doesn't have a robot arm available. And the reason boils down to, well, a couple things. And the first big one is tangential vectors. See, even if you were to like remove the limits of humans and hell, let's just say you were able to whip your arm around as fast as the bullet coming out of the gun, the bullet still would not curve. Let's prove this using some math. Let's use Angela Angelina Jolie's custom Safari Arms Manchester 1911 clone because it's my favorite gun in the film. It's the gun responsible for the most ridiculous stunt in the movie, and I honestly only even know what it is because I am whatever the opposite of a firearm nerd is, and my editor's husband, Dan, helps me out by identifying it for me. Give a like to the video for Dan! Anyway, this gun fires 145 grain, 45 ACP rounds, and a muzzle velocity of 410 meters per second or 120% the speed of sound. <laughs> so what if you, a human being, managed to whip your arm around it over the speed of sound as the bullet was traveling down the barrel? What would happen? Well, you'd be imparting velocity perpendicular to the bullet's forward velocity, or in super nerd terms, since you're actually
actually swinging your arm, you're applying a tangential velocity to it, aka a velocity that runs tangent to the arc of your arm swing. Okay, so BAM! The bullet exits the barrel. And? Well, at this moment, it's a free object in the air. This is a closed system, meaning you can no longer impart any force or energy into it. Once it is outside of the gun, that is it. Thankfully, since you're apparently Superman, you did impart sideways movement into it equal to the forward movement. That means every second, it's going to move 410 meters forward as usual. However, it's also going to move 410 and 10 meters to the left. So hell yeah, looks like you curved it, right? Wrong, 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 wrong. You did not curve it. All you managed to do for all your strength is make the bullet go in a straight line again. Yeah, whoop de doo it's moving sideways. You know what would also do that? Just pointing the gun to the side at a 45 degree angle. You see, in order to curve, there needs to be acceleration. There needs to be force. This is kind of like Einstein's thought experiment about flying through a box in space. If you were just flying through space at a constant velocity near the speed of light and you shined a flashlight, you'd notice that it moves downward at a straight line. But if you're accelerating, it will curve downward. All curves, all of them, require a rate of change. Y equals X, straight line. Y equals 2X, straight line. All you did by flailing your arm faster than the speed of sound was find an incredible difficult way to make a dangerous ballistic version of y equals x. A curve, meanwhile, like this, has a formula that has change in it somehow. y equals x squared, or y equals the square root of x, in order to turn this x into an x squared, or these meters per second into meters per second squared, we need to somehow find a way of imparting force into the bullet after it has left the gun. Is this possible to do? after the bullet has left the barrel. No, it is not. Well, at least not by flinging your arm to the side like you see in the movie. You see, we're able to curve baseballs and in some extreme circumstances arrows mid-flight because we're able to more or less turn them into wings. Arrows can be bent in such a way that their fletching, instead of stabilizing them evenly, will create a net force in one direction, allowing them to turn. Curveballs in baseball work much in the same way. By spinning, a baseball creates a low pressure zone on the side of the ball the spin is moving toward and a high pressure zone on the opposite its side, all related to the direction it's thrown. This high pressure pushes the ball toward the low pressure side, allowing it to curve mid-flight due to Bernoulli's principles. It's a round wing! Isn't that pretty cool? Now, the ballistic nerds among you may be shouting, SPIN DRIFT! And you guys, you need to calm down, okay? I love you, but I'm like trying to do a show right now. I'm like building the drama, you know? So like, just calm down. We will get there. Anyway, the Timmies and Jimmies jumping up in their seats right now are right. Bullets do this too, interestingly enough. You see, the bore of the barrel of a gun almost always has a twisted groove that spins the bullet as it travels through. This gives the bullet a much more stable flight arc due to what's known as gyroscopic stabilization. And while this spin creates a much more consistent flight path in general and keeps the bullet flying while facing forward, it does introduce another form of instability called spin drift, which is the exact same thing that happens with baseballs. The exact drift you get really depends upon the bullet, where you are above sea level and temperature, etc. but it's about five inches to the left or right every 1,000 yards on average. So, if you specifically had a gun designed to impart a bunch of extra spin into special bullets designed to curves, could you do what you see in the movie? Let's take the most forgiving scene in the entire movie, when the protagonist curves his first bullet around Angelina Jolie's head and hits a target directly behind her. Typical firing ranges are about 100 meters long, and let's say, for the sake of simplicity, that Jolie is in the middle of the range. In this scene, we see the bullet pass across her entire face before just barely missing her and then curving back. Angelina Jolie's head is approximately 0.1397 meters wide. Let's tack on an extra centimeter to account for grazing her hair with the bullet. The muzzle velocity of 45 ACPs is 410 meters per second. We need to figure out a couple of things, and they are a bit tricky when you take the 
them at face value. Using the acceleration displacement formula, we can figure out exactly how much acceleration a bullet would need to be under in order to miss Jolie. Putting Jolie in the center makes our lives easier because if it just misses her at the peak of flight as it flies back, it should hit the target exactly. Since we're talking about motion in two dimensions though, things get kinda weird. We can use the formula S equals 410 meters per second sine theta times half the distance divided by 410 meters per second cosine theta. This is our velocity in the left right direction. Minus, because this other part is acceleration and our acceleration is going to be slowing down our bullet in the sideways direction, one half 410 meters per second sine theta divided by distance divided by 410 meters per second cosine theta times half the distance divided by 410 meters per second cosine theta squared. Boom! This is an ugly formula, and if we simplify everything and cross stuff out and isolate theta, our angle, we can actually find the minimum angle you'd need to fire a bullet that had curved to miss Jolie and still hit the target. We need this minimum angle because it's going to give us the best shot at figuring out if this is even remotely possible. The more you curve the bullet, the more acceleration it has to be under, which means the more spin it has to have in the barrel as it leaves, which means the more you guys accuse me of just looking for a way to fail these people. Anyway, this mess simplifies, I kid you not, to theta equals arc tangent 4s divided by distance, where s is the amount we want the bullet to curve by in its middle point, and distance is the distance to the target. If Jolie isn't in the middle of the arc, this formula does need some tweaking here and there, but it is perfect for our purposes. And if you had a bullet that curved properly in flight, if you were standing pretty much right in front of Jolie, you'd only have to fire it at an angle of 0.343 degrees in order to just miss her. And it would only have to have a rate of acceleration of 20.13 meters per second per second to the left in order to cancel out the relatively small sideways velocity of 2.456 meters per second it's traveling at as it leaves the gun in the point one two seconds it takes to reach Jolie. That's doable, right? Well, the average bullet spins at 256,000 rotations per minute and drifts about 5 inches per 1,000 yards. In order to get a bullet to curve this much due to spin drift, it would need to spin over 8.66 times faster than this. Over 2 point two million rotations per minute, which would put, no joke, 2.4 million newtons of torque on the bullet and exert a pressure of 41,000 megapascals, over 2,000 times the tensile strength of lead. The bullet would freaking powderize in midair due to the rotational forces imparted on it, and there's no way you could build a wing into the round that would impart enough force to curve it that way. There is no way this is possible, even with a gun and a bullet designed to do it. And what's with this climactic scene where Jolie murders an entire room by herself by shooting a bullet in a freaking circle? A circle? That is way more impossible somehow. You see, even with sideways acceleration, a bullet would never go in a circle. It would just start to curve more and more to one direction as its forward momentum is translated into sideways speed to the point where it'd basically just be traveling to the left or right. In order to travel in a complete circle, it'd have to have a way to, like, dynamic change its velocity with what? Like rockets? Yes, it would need little rockets on there. Or maybe you could like tie it to a string that would pull it towards the center of the room. There's no way! No way! This is dumb. This is utterly impossible and I proved it! I proved it with math! And then not a single robot! So y'all can stop telling Grant that he didn't try hard enough to bend the bullets, right? Just like, leave my boy alone. You have your episode with the experiments, now you have this video with the math. Let this be the end of it. Bending bullets is freaking impossible. Sincerely, Austin. And hey, since you're here, if you want to see more science on this channel here, I sh recommend that you go to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash shoddycast, where I'll be doing more TV episodes like this here. Um, and I have another thing in the works that only patrons get to know about, but that's a uh, that's secret. So anyway, bye! Subscribe to the channel.